This shit's always fucking on the way. That man is tired. Hold on, ran a mile with that. Doris, no, it's a problem. That's it. Block it too, right? Yeah. Ice bucket. Vodka in it? A lot, yeah. Um, not other than that. Bottle. What's, what's in that bottle? It's like. Uh, uh, High school. I understand all the bottles. A little under that. You good? No? Yeah. I'll just do this one. Thank you. Is it good? No, no, I'm turned down. Lid. Shot's good. Shot's good? Those are, those are our cameras? That moment? No, we got those. Oh, we got them. That's a moment, right? Yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. So, all right, hold on. You want to close the garage? Can you see it? Yeah. Anything else you want to do after? Oh, it's, it's over. Did you leave it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Thank you for the COVID, guys. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your house. <laughs> You've been amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Glad you got a Thank chance you. to meet. You know, this is our first time meeting. It is. <laughs> 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 you didn't tell yeah. him? You didn't tell him? Nice. That's why I said hi. She's like, is he coming today? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, 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 that's because I'm watching from the zone, that's Make sure it's moving more. Love you. Troy? Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. So recording. We're 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 over there for? Yeah, we got two hours on this on this one. You want me to record? Yeah, you measure? can press record now. Are you streaming? What's on that one? It's two hours on that one. I'm thinking how much is on this one? Five hours. Yeah. This one has six. six. Six hours. Switching half, switching half. Switch yeah, switching. No, no, not the camera, just the car, bro. Yo, where's the, where's the ice car? This is easier. Right, where's your dive bucket? Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, right here. Put it right here. Oh, I didn't say that, but I'm dark-skinned, I'm dark-skinned. He said anything. I guess the thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> to be honest with you, he was supposed to. <laughs> I got one question. I was like, yo, uh, um, yo, yo, YouTube? I don't know about YouTube. <laughs> 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 That's not what I'm here for. Somebody can do it. Oh, I think you're trying to open the door. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to help him out?
It says home. Oh no! That's why I said people realize that I'm going to take that. Mike, Mike, it's not fun when it's fun when it's fun when it's fun when I'm at home. I'm at home. Why would you have to ask? <laughs> <laughs> there shouldn't be anybody coming. Um, we rolling over there? <laughs> we are rolling. You rolling? Stop. We're good. All right. Ready? Do it. All right, guys. Welcome back. <laughs> Hall of Fame edition. Woo! Great Elysia, EYL. What? This is something that, um, this is big for us. Big day for us. Um, so first and foremost, we got to thank our guy, King Burks. Shout out to the legend. Shout out to King, man. Good, 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 genuine dude. Without him, this wouldn't have been possible. Um, we connected the dots for it. So, Ernie Alicia, you know, we've been checking off our bucket list. We interviewed Shaquille O'Neal. Yep, yep. We've interviewed our favorites from a long list of different people. I don't want to forget anybody. But, you know, it's one person that early on, early on. We only had two people early on. Yeah. We had Nipsey Hussle and we had uh, Dave Gatch. And um, Dane was really an inspiration for us as far as with business podcasts. Not something that probably would have been as popular as it, as it has been if uh, maybe he didn't push the envelope of business and entertainment and being um, independent for so long. And he had a legendary Breakfast Club interview that yeah, changed my really life. changed, yeah, changed a, lot of, a lot of people's lives for sure. So, you know, leave needs no introduction, but entrepreneur, family man, record executive, film producer, a director, actor, fashion designer. Father. Um, yeah, I said family man. Um, we're in his studio right now, so this, this is gonna be, this is gonna get a good one. So first and foremost, Dane, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. We're both on your lady. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Never was a record executive always on the way. Okay. Um, Nicolette, you can bring me the orange juice and the vodka, please. Not that I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Dane, Dane, let's let's get into it, man. Um, we want to talk about. Put this over here. All right. Man, you want to it over. You got that laugh on your. I'm right. You did. You look like you're right. <laughs> you're not lying. So, Dane, let's get into it, man. We want to talk about a lot of different things here, but um, the first thing I want to talk about, we in your studio, then. It's in the middle of a global pandemic, but the thing that you actually told us is something that is true for us and a lot of other people that we, we've interviewed on our show is that, um, you know, it's actually been a situation where you're actually lucrative and during this time for creators, content creators. So you actually own a studio, a network. So I want to talk about that because I, I haven't really heard you speak about it too much and I feel like a lot of interviews they ask kind of the same questions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, owning a studio, owning a, a network, we're going to get into the, the nitty gritty of it, but what was, what, what's, what's the, the idea behind that? Like, what made you want to go into that world? Well, when I mean, you relate to this, it was on my bucket list to have a network. But residual income became um, really important to me because as I was getting older, I was like, I don't feel like being so social. I don't feel like being around people so much, especially people I don't like. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be able to earn money while I was by the pool and do it when I felt like it. So, you know, in my experiences with making movies and the percentages I owned of certain movies, I was like, damn, if I made my own movies, own them 100%. And when the internet came, because of the direct-to-consumer relationship, I could sell it directly to them. You know, you remember, even back at the breakfast club, I was like, cut out the middleman. Yeah. There's an internet. So I just think I grasped the reality of what was happening because I was looking for it. I was looking for independence, and the internet gave me that. And having the wherewithal to make content, you know, observing content is cool. I went through that phase, but to get residual income, you have to be able to do something that people want to see over and over again, which is scripted, something with a beginning, middle, and end produced a certain way. And, you know, in this moment, it's a crowded block. I think a lot of what people are doing right now is good, but, you know, it would have been better if you had realized it 10 years ago it was there. So now instead of being weight, you're two for five. You know, you're a trick. And you have to hustle on a crowded block. You know, I was preparing, not to say for this moment, 
So for the moment that I could just completely do what I want, when I want, how I want, by the pool. So when the pandemic happened, it was perfect. People were homing in things to watch. I had a lot of content to edit. I own all the cameras at the studio. I don't have but five people in my studio anyway. You see when you came in here, you had to get heavily tested. Right. Not even, not only a test, I'm able to also put the gun on you too, the heat gun. <laughs> see what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm diabetic, I can't yeah, yeah. stand it. But at the yeah. end of the day, a general has to be able to move in a war. A soldier place to be told what to do. A general prepares for a war before it happens. I'm a general. So I was preparing for a different war. The war and the revolution has always been financial empowerment. It's always been able to tell them to get the fuck out of my face. I'll do it on my own and be confident. And that's always the way I've approached things. I've always known that if they could do it, I could do it. Period. I'm looking at my competition and they don't seem swaggier than me. They don't seem cooler than me. They don't seem tougher than me. You know, they don't, they, they're not built for this. They, they seem to be told what to do. They seem to be acting like it's theirs and it's not. You know? And for me, it's like, I have pets. I have pet dogs, my puppies. And they depend on me for food. They give me comfort. But I'd be like, I wonder how they would have been able to survive on their own if they had to actually kill something every day to eat. They'd be a different kind of animal. So when I look at me and I look at others, I'm just like, yo, I'm a different kind of animal. You're a puppy. You live for somebody's entertainment. You get fed. You gotta be nice. I'm a wild animal. I'm a killer before somebody gives me anything. I like the way that feels. Yeah, you started at the beginning of the pandemic, you said that you had to create content channels. But within that, you, you went into the, the definition of why content is so important because when you have a lot of it, you create a catalog. And as you create a catalog, now you can license it. Can you get into that a little bit? Yeah, it's just like anything. Residual income. People will pay to borrow it or rent it from you so that they can put commercials or have people pay for it. So let's say a BG wants to license one of my movies, a guy I need 400000 for three years. But you're going to give it back as soon as the three years is done. And you can only have the rights for television, not digital or anything else. And that exists for every form, from Facebook to digital, probably Instagram in a minute. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's what licensing is. So your, your, your model, you, I know you have the subscription, so you, you do a little bit of both. You, you do the subscription service and you do the licensing, or is it like I do all of that. That's just the ancillary thing is the licensing. But at the end of the day... <clears throat> right now it's a streaming service, but there's also a 24-hour network that it goes over the air in Charlotte. And there's, now I'll be able to go and have the 24-hour network playing from the actual app. So you'll be able to go watch television and have the television experience, or you can pay and subscribe, and you'll be able to get it on demand. Let me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, because... Um, but also, let me say one more thing. One of the other reasons why it was important for me to have and have my own network was because it was like I'm selling music and they use music in networks. I'm selling clothes and everybody got to wear clothes. At the time I was selling weed. I smoked weed in the content. So it also becomes a commercial for everything. So if you watch Honor Up, I made the clothes, I made the music, you know, I made the sunglasses. Everything that you see can be bought from me. So it also becomes a commercial for my ancillary products. Cross branding. Um, they can buy it directly from me. So I right. store. Yeah. It becomes home shopping network while you're watching it. And in the television business, traditionally a network will um, pay a production company. They'll buy their idea and then pay them to execute it. So all these ideas, these black shows that come from black people, but the only way a network will take the show is if it comes from a white production company, such as E1, people like Tara Law, and We Channel will only take our black stories if they're made and budgets controlled by white people. So I walk into E1, I see posters of black families all over the wall, but in the offices I only see white people. And the dysfunction that they cause and try to capture they always want to put a camera on us, but you turn the camera on them. Oh, get that camera off me, I'm not signing off and all that. They want us to make fools of ourselves, capture that narrative, play it over and over again so you believe it. 
and they want to make sure that they're not seen at all. And they never exploit their own culture. So I look at channels like VH1 and look at what's the most, the, the biggest thing on the network is our dysfunction. Mm -hmm. I look at We Channel and they try to make us, us as legends look like dysfunctional people and actually do things to make it appear that way. And then the other programming is jail. You know, it's embarrassing watching the We Channel. Life after jail. It's embarrassing making money. We have our own trauma and we don't know how to help ourselves. We think being fucked up and being depressed is normal and it's not. We don't teach financial empowerment on television. We, we get taught, yo, take a short price so you can make some money going to the strip club. Build your brand that way. Be stupid and act crazy so people will pay to actually talk crazy to you in person. So, so what's that process like, right? You said that the network is in Charlotte right now. It's, it's also well, over the air. Over the air. It, is it, has it been tough with, with actual, I guess, big networks trying to broadcast it or syndicate it? Or what is that process been like? I mean, right now, I'm just opening up shop, so it's been cool. It's been easy as fuck. It's been having information and understanding it and applying it. The shit they don't teach us. It's, it, it's been expensive figuring it out, but it's been worth it, and it's been fun. So you know? let, me, let me ask you this. So um, I don't want to compare you to Netflix, but I was using them as an example. Definitely compare me to Netflix. All right. Uh, even better. So Netflix, if anybody's not familiar, they, they spend the most money out of any TV station in the world on original content. And they're also heavily in debt. Like, well, I'll let me explain that to you. Okay. Well, I'll also ask you a question. Um, so they spend so much money that their, their profit margins are extremely thin because they're spending it. I don't think that's the business model. Okay. I think the business model is buying content and leveraging it. Later. But in the beginning, they were uh, licensing, and that's the reason why they lost so much money, was because they were licensing. And then when they did their own original programming, I think it was called House of Cards, that changed the whole game for them. But every year they do lose a billion dollars, but they raise a billion dollars. Yeah. But they, at the end of the day, there's probably one company that's just for, and you know they own stars too, by the way. So basically they can incubate one there and put it there. And I think one company is really primarily for, and I'm not saying that I know it, but if I was a betting man, I would think one is for the subscriptions, which is a loss, but they can raise money and blah, blah, blah. And the other is for the content that they own that they can leverage, that they'll be getting residual income from because they actually are paying people to make shit that they own. Well, yeah, so well, my question was, as far as creating content that is expensive, that's why they have to borrow money, I'm assuming. How does that relate to you? Like, that's a scam. They're just paying for fucking, uh, uh, you know, too much money for craft services and shit. I own all the cameras, so I cut out all that bullshit. I can do everything. So I ain't got to pay it right. I ain't got to outsource a production company. I am a production company. I ain't got to rent no cameras. I got the cameras. I ain't got to rent no editing base. I got the editing base. And if I got to act, I'm going to jump in front of that shit and do it too. Hey, you're 100% funded by your project. 100. And, all right. So you pretty much, it's, it's a more efficient manner as far as not just paying this, this crew, that crew, that crew to shoot, this, everything is in households, so it's, it's less. Because the reason why I'm asking you, because I know you're- Outsourcing happy. makes no sense. Because then people make up jobs and get paid for it. Cuts out a lot of bullshit and you know how to do it yourself. See, I'm not only administrative, I'm creative. So people be thinking that shit is normal, that I can direct, act, write, play instruments, <laughs> you know, just do everything. When, when, when I say I direct something, like some people are just known for directing and that's it. That's all they do. When I say I direct something, they're like, oh yeah, he does dang, he directs. Oh shit, he's acting and he's not an actor, but it's just dang. Like you don't recognize me as an actor. You don't look at me as a director. You don't look at me as a producer. You don't look at me as a, 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 a fashion icon and a fashion, you know, like, but I do all these things and I started all these businesses from scratch. All the things that people went to school for, I dominated at a very young age. No, I think we do um, recognize you as no, I'm not saying that. Well, I'm just saying like it's, it's normal. normal. It's, it's normal. It's, normal. Yeah. Yeah. it's like they think it's normal. Yeah. Like yesterday, Nicolette had a show. I picked up a guitar and started playing. It's just, that's not normal. So the, the fashion industry, I, I, I heard something <coughs> where you were saying that um, the profit margins are extremely low in the fashion industry. Yeah, that's that's exactly. something that you was involved in. I don't think you're really involved in fashion anymore. Like you no, just, I still am. You still are? Yeah. What's your, what's your, how's your experience? Because you've had several different 
multi-million dollar companies, you've had, what's your experience in the fashion world? But that's a whole different conversation as well, the fashion industry, I feel like. The fashion world is you have to build the brand first and you have to lose money for a little while before you gain it. But if you actually build your brand doing something else and you have the wherewithal to actually make clothing and content, not content, clothing with a point of view, then you can have a direct to consumer relationship and not to be so, not so profitable. So traditionally, the fashion business sucks if you're going through it where you have to order a bunch of inventory ahead of time, whether people are gonna buy it or not. You gotta plan, you gotta put up, if somebody orders a million dollars worth of shit, unless you got 500,000 to not be able to touch for like six months, then you can't do it. Like growth can kill you. But in this day and age, you can go to a factory, make your clothes, and sell it directly to your consumer, market it by yourself, because it's your point of view. You have Instagram, there's so many ways to do things now. So the traditional way of doing things, it makes it where a normal person would need an institution and have to sell his, his whole soul away to get it done. What I've been trying to explain to people for years is you don't have to do that no more. People are just catching on. But I've been saying it for years. You, you've been, I mean, you've helped and mentored and pretty much started a lot of brands. Um, Rachel Roy, obviously, you helped, obviously mentored Gay. Is there, are there people right now that you're looking at? Are you still involved in that process of mentoring and, and Giving people the guidance in the, in the fashion industry? In fashion? Yeah. Yeah, that's what popping to me. That's my fashion. So we make clothes, we make socks, you know, we make all, we make everything. And but right now it's about really building the brand. And at some point I'll license it out. This is I'm just saying anyone, anyone else. In general, yeah. am, am I looking to teach people? Yeah. I mean, they can learn it from watching me. But, you know, teaching people takes time for my dreams sometimes. So I teach people through the interviews. Yeah, that's not my I go, You go to Papatee University on Dame Dash Studios and there's usually a clinic on something. I want to I ask you a question. Because being the age of, what can I do this? And it's left. In the background, can you show the, the streaming service? Just fuck around with it a little bit? I'm sorry. And also Nicolette, she has an album coming out, a movie coming out, a TV show. Anyone that works for me or works with me has to have a dream. Because yeah. you can't fight for my dream if you can't fight for your own. It just won't happen. Um, that's crazy. I literally wrote down that quote, I'm like, that's dope. And I hear you talk about your dreams a lot. And in my mind, I'm like, I've never really heard you say what your ultimate dream is. I know you I see it. you're built involved in so much, but what's the ultimate dream for being dead? Yeah, I don't know what the ultimate is, because every time I have a dream, I, I make it happen, and then I have another dream. Mm. You know? So my ultimate dream is to be like, that would be made to Disney at one time. But also to have, and it's happening. So, you know, I see my brother Kanye, and he's making deals that make me very proud, you know? Good. And I get to go visit him, and the way he can treat me, the way he fronts on me, <laughs> <laughs> that nigga be stunning. So like, when, he, when he's doing these deals, like the gap deal he just did, is he hitting you up like, your damn about this, or I, he's like, I, you I, get That's on one thing we don't do, is talk about what we talk about. Okay, okay, got you. But, um, I can say this, I'm always giving him that I'm proud of the core. You know, always. I want to talk about something in fashion, but since we on Kanye, Kanye, global icon, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you was like the first person to really believe in his vision to rap. He was a producer, but you, you, you saw something that was- He like, earned the right to believe in his vision to rap because he helped so many of my artists. Mm -hmm. I didn't really care if you could rap or not, you know? Do what you want to do, bro. You just gave us too many records. Yeah, the, the, the first time you I was learning that kind of So did, did you see, like, mm -hmm. obviously nobody yeah. could predict the future, but did you see something special? Like, all right, this dude is different. He's not just a regular producer, like, he's different. Nah, mm -hmm. not at the beginning. Okay, honest answer. Yeah. In the beginning, it was, you know, it was like, he was at the low, it was him and just, just Wade. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And um, they both were making rapid hits. Did I see him being a fashion icon? Nah. Because first he only used to wear polo. <laughs> so I used to be like, yo, that's not fashion. <laughs> For real, I pulled him to the side. You have to imagine those conversations. <laughs> you know, I took him to London. Yeah. And showed him shit. And I know he was gonna be the, like, when I talked to Kanye, he said, yo, I'm the living, breathing dragon of everything that you wanna be. And he really is. 
Yeah, uh, so we in the we in the age of protest, like, and I always say support post. I've been in the life of protest though. But let me let me, let me go. I'm going to I got you. I always say that um, support goes a lot further than boycott. What I mean by that is that like, so the Gucci thing when they do the blackface and they and they protest and they come to Harlem and have like a sit down. I, I apparently when you guys had Rockaway, you tried to approach I think Iceberg at the time, yeah. and they said. No, it wasn't interesting. It was disrespectful. Can you tell that story? Yeah, we ran iceberg, so I went to them. I think um, the head of sales was knowing how come their shit was spiking. And I went to go meet with him and me and Jay. And it was like, you know, they're just very dismissive. They didn't want to give us any free clothes. They told us we could go to a sample set. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I'm putting you out of business. So I started rocking. Literally. So, but the reason why I like that story is because, like, instead of, like, you started rocking and then it just blew up and became a massive success, but you focus your energy on your own thing as opposed to trying to be included in somebody else's situation. So, it's because I'm a general, I'm not a soldier. Well, what that, I, that's what people have to understand. A soldier is never going to check a general, and, you know, you can't have the so much expectation of a soldier or someone with a slave mentality. They resent your independence, and I had to learn that. So do you feel that more emphasis should be put on supporting and growing, especially for black people, their own businesses as opposed to trying to be included in diversity programs and other people's businesses? I'm a firm believer in if you don't want me in your house or I don't like the rules, fuck your house. If I'm buying your house and kicking you out, I'm gonna build a bigger one and be more comfortable and you can't come over. And that's the way I approach things and always have. So another thing, another area, and I wasn't aware of it and it wasn't common to us, but you were involved in art before any of us go to school. Um, and you know, you had your art gallery. You tried records, correct? Yeah. I see the, the, uh, so, and you can laugh. Yeah. Can you take them to, uh, can you take them to, uh, we went to Jamaica, episode one? Because, you know, the good thing about it is yeah. talking that shit sounds good, but I can show you what I was doing. You feel me? Yeah, I, but I, I heard... You don't so, have to visualize it, but we can still talk about shit. Yeah, doing. people are trying to figure out how you make the money off the outcome. So I heard, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the good thing is like you would find the talent and buy all that artwork and then travel around the world so, so people could see it and that would raise the value of it. Is that true? Yeah, you listen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but the beginning, from the beginning. It's not. Oh, this? Okay, that's the story. Turn it up. This is Jamaica? Yeah, but this will be the story. From the very beginning, I'm showing you that time. I'll be like, this is one of my students. No, no, play it. Why, why, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't get it. Oh, is that the very beginning? Yeah, it is. Okay. No, that's not the very beginning. The beginning. The beginning of here. You know, that is the beginning. All smart and Our community is 172. It gives independent, like minded people a platform to create without any compromise to quality. Okay. Because after I did the project, I made the Black Keys, Black Rock, where I put a bunch of legendary hip hop artists yeah. with some rock and roll with them, some live music information. Everybody wanted to be very major.
But this is what I was trying to get people to understand. Yeah, that was 2009, bro. 2010. Wow. 2020 right now. It's a fact. Visionary. Troy appreciates that. <laughs> so, shout out to Jamaica. Blog. Shout out to the Jamaican man. Yeah. 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 So you should check that out. I'm going to go see Sizzle. I was in judgment. Y'all get hot. With Sizzle. Don't get no better than that. <laughs> it definitely <Yeah>. doesn't. <laughs> Dane, um, one of the things that you know a lot of people talk about in business is that you have to be diplomatic. Um, no, no, you don't. You don't believe in that? Listen, I should be a drug dealer. When your drugs are good, you ain't got to be nice. You'd be like, yo, get online. <laughs> and they're taking no senders. And they happen to, because they're going to get high. If you're getting your client high, all you have to do is make sure they get high. And they'll stay on that line. Okay. Fair enough. So, when you, when you talk about your music industry career, right? Because a lot of people, obviously, you've done so many different things. You start, well, I don't say a start, but that's what really kind of, you know, put you on the radar for the most people know you is music. So the first thing I did, all right, all good start. So you have a foul taste in your mouth about the music industry, or are you still, like, optimistic about music, musicians? Like, yeah, I, what's, your, what's, your, what's your vibe on, on music? But I feel like... The industry, I'll tell you, the industry is fake, full of shit. It's all about exploiting artists and hurting them and just taking all of their energy. Music is a lot. But the music industry is a farce. So for up and coming artists, do it yourself. No, no record label, no. Make them work for you. You know, don't do a record deal where you have to sell your whole ass. Three sixty. Be so hot. Do your own shows. Do your own residencies. And when they come through, be like, you'll give me some money, but it'll be to distribute the shit that I own. Period. Or get out of my fucking office my club or whatever. That, so that was the purpose of your Underground 100, right? I, 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 you know, I read that you were like, listen, I'm only doing 100 because I know that these people are the localized fans, these people I are wanted the 100 of the coolest people. Mm -hmm. I don't need no nerdy motherfuckers around. If you cool enough to know that it's going on, right. and you cool enough to be there, then you cool. But if I don't want no corny motherfuckers, they could get it 10 years later. I don't like to be around cool people. I, I, I've always architected my bubble. I only want to be around cool, opinion leaders, like-minded people. And I filter and I edit people. You said something in that breakfast club interview that was, you know, very controversial. I think I understood what you meant, but another one of the things that kind of looked up, you said you put money in the street. You know, you're not really into saving too much. So I'm assuming what you meant by that is you, you know, you're reinvesting your money into your businesses, like all money in, like Nick said. Um, is that something that you still, well, hey, am I right by that interpretation? And is that something that you still kind of live I by? I don't see the purpose of holding money. I don't see the purpose. It's all about flipping. And at the end of the day, like <clears throat> everything I do is for my children, mm -hmm. you know? When I get money, it goes to my kids. I think, I, yeah, that was like, the, when I said that, that interview and a couple other ones changed my life, I think that was the most important thing that I heard. Um, just working in education, and then when you were, were saying, like, yo, if you're doing something for yourself, then you're selfish, and I kind of like resonated, I'm just like, damn. And in my mind, I'm like, look, I'm doing this, I've been busting my ass for 10 years in the education field, countless yeah, hours. education field? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I took to the OSG network. 90 principles, like principles. Yeah, 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 I, heard about about um, yeah, yeah I forgot the gentleman's name, but I, I mean, I got in touch with him before the last year. Dennis McKinney? Yes. Oh, I'll get you right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's still, oh. he's the Dame Dash of education. Yeah. So my thing is put together quite a crew. Yeah, he's he, he, he touch base. At that, at that um, point, he's up. I was like, yo, all this work I'm doing, I, I, don't right I can't give this degree to my son, I can't give this degree to my daughter. I'll give you an OSG one. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> But yeah, that, that changed my mindset. It was like, yo, it was just an entrepreneurial mindset. Even though I was working in a, in a nine to five, or nine to three for education, it was like, yo, we gotta create something, I gotta create something, or scale something so it, it, it can be passed on. So when I said I could change my life, like, that was it. But there's a quote that, that you say, and um, I wanna know if it's a long-term goal or is it short-term goals that you put inside of the quote. You say every day start something new, fin finish something new. What is start that? Something, start, start something new and finish something that you had started before. Every day. 
Yeah. And we talk, are we talking? So, like, what would be a prime example of that? We just started something new today, and the editor is he still here? My man is George. Is here? There you go, right there. We're gonna finish that OG stories. Good. Today. That's a fact. Dave, a lot of people listen to us, aspiring entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, right? People that's, you know, learning. Because that's the thing about, this one of the reasons why I think our podcast has become so popular, especially in our culture. You mission. said it's not a podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> also, also you know, the brand is bigger than the podcast. Okay. All right. You said it's not a podcast. Okay. This is one of the reasons why people like the show. Thank so you. much, right? Is that it's meant you're gonna, you have to talk your shit into existence. If you call them a podcast, then that's all it is. That's true. All right. One of the reasons why people like Ernie Lee is just because it, perform, it provides mentorship, right? Instead, instead of people just having to figure it out on their own, they can learn from people that actually have gone through it and learn from their, their ups and their downs. So as far as like business, do you have any, any regrets that you might have done things like differently or maybe handled something differently, whether it's relationships or business or anything? Um, you know, it's crazy, right? Um, honestly, every single second of my life is meant, and everyone else's life, I think, is meant to be a learning experience. So when something happens that didn't go the way you wanted it to, you look at what you learned from it, right? And there's been businesses that I got completely robbed for short paper. But what I learned from it protected me from getting robbed for big paper. You understand what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I'm so happy. In this very moment, I'm so happy. Like, scary happy. You know what I mean? I, I think that's like, like a in, a, in, a matter, in, the middle, in the middle of a pandemic, yeah. all my dreams are coming to me. Which is crazy to me. So I would have to say, if there was anything that would stop me from being this happy now, or that would change, if it's like, is there anything I could have done that could have made me as happy as I am now? I'm happy now because every decision that most people thought would be tough, every business I walked away from, every person I walked away from, every person that I punished that everyone told me not to, from a Leo Cohen to a Harvey Weinstein. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I was in a position to do it. I'm glad I'm that guy, that these guys are known to be bullies and I bullied them. I'm the bully of bullies. I'm happy about that. So I love the fact that these challenges and these tests have presented themselves to me. And I can get in the shower, I'm like, damn, I really am a fucking superhero. I never ever waver when it comes to honor, never have. I've walked away from people that no one would walk away from. I've barked on people that no one would bark on until everyone is barking on. I did it alone. Asalaamu Alaikum Shalom. I think I could take them alone. That's one of my records. <laughs> Game, so you said before the purpose of a business is to start a business and sell a business. Is that still how you feel? Is this, this, is this the goal of what we're doing now with um, the studios? Is it the multiple breakdown and sell yeah. it eventually? Yeah, either sell it or make it so much money I ain't got to sell it. But yeah. yeah. You live by sell a business so I can start a new one. But again, it's like, I'm so happy right now. I like this life that I'm living. I'm really happy. Yeah, I, I mean, just watching from, from afar, it seems like you've got a good balance. I'm not in a fucking ball. <laughs> you know what it is to be a rock star your whole life? I'm hitting 50. I'm like, yo, this shit ain't even slowing down. <laughs> you know? That's why I be in the gym. Like, I got to stay in shape for this life. I'm having mad fun. Why would I stop having fun? I'm having mad fun. And I'm productive while I'm having... I'm having... I'm making money off having fun. And I'm learning so much more. And I'm around the people I want to be around. I'm like, damn, I wish I could have fucking figured this shit out earlier, but it, the timing would, I mean like, if you listen, Nicolette, 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 yeah. can you put revolution on? 
This record we made last year, I, for some reason I decided to be a rock star last year. I've been mean, watching. Just go. Yeah, I've been mean, watching. I've been watching. You know, what else? I want to be, I'm a rock star. I'll be saying it. Just woke up, watch some, just vibe. Ten, ten, was it ten songs a day? Oh, yeah. When, we, when, when Tash comes, we make like at least ten songs and ideas that we could sharpen up. Some real live guitar. I can, oh, oh, I'll play you some new shit that's. Nah, I've been I mean, I mean, watching, man. Yo, also. Damn, I wonder if Kanye would get mad. But I want to play, I'm not going to play it live, but after I'm going to play some shit, I can't give it to you, but <laughs> after the new shit is retarded. Don't worry, nobody's listening. Nobody's listening. Bro, that's your own secret. Now look, I made this Whatever that shit was. <laughs> <laughs> behind you, like, oh, look, look better. 
Uh, so, how am I gonna tell you what you should do? I'm gonna help you do it. Uh, so, like the the, the the economic and the, the political climate, like this is unprecedented time. Black Lives Matter. Everybody, great time. It does get to you? Like, what what's the process, right? If it I have, get to me. What's, what's the process? You gotta get to you to get to me. I don't want to talk to anybody. I got shit to do. But so what I'm doing is I'm empowering other people so that they can empower other people. That's what I'm doing. You still, you might be younger than me. You know, you still feel like being out there. You running around. So I'm gonna give you the power to distribute whatever power I got to who you curate. Cause you're doing such good shit. Appreciate it, gotcha. They say, they say, you know, we always learn the average million that has seven streams of income, multiple streams of income. But I feel like that's something that you always did was have multiple streams. You never know when a well's gonna dry up, so you gotta have other ones. So that's something that you just early knew early on. Like, what's your what's your theory behind having multiple different avenues working at the same time? Okay, imagine this. <laughs> imagine your number one artist after his first album saying, "I quit." That's Jay Z. Jay Z quit after. What do you mean? He retired after reasonable doubt. It's supposed to be his first and last album. Did he? It's supposed yeah. to be it's supposed to be his first. Fifteen album. albums later, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> You know, from that day, I was like, well, I ain't depending on this nigga. <laughs> we'll build a roster. What? <laughs> but, but how long did he retire, though? Like, for like a, a month? He had value one. He didn't retire. No, he passed. He just passed in his body. Nigga, how many fucking retirements did this nigga do? A lot. All right, so oh, like, yeah. Yeah. I, I lost count how many times he retired. <laughs> so that, 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 that pushed you, that pushed you to just diversify. Yeah, it was like 19. <laughs> Damn, that was that, yeah. it, it wasn't only that, it was just that I was a guy that just thought I could do everything better. So it was like, I'm fresher than Rafa Lynn. I know it. I met this nigga. I'm fresher than him. I know I am. I know I'm cooler than all he wants to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I done shook this nigga down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he's not the one. He's my little man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, I see what Charlie, you know, all these dudes, Charlie Watts, Leo Cohen's, I'm like, this nigga? You know what I'm saying? Y'all scared of him? It's my little man. So, the big only has spoken. That's the big So, for me, I'll be like, yo, any industry, like now I'm on TV, I'm like, Lauren from fucking Wee TV? Fucking Tara? Long? So, <laughs> how could they be fucking telling the cool nigga what to do? Was, that was your show? The, the the growing up hip hop. I was an executive producer. Executive right? producing it. Yeah, but it's all you know. It was because it was, your son was involved with the show. My son and then my daughter. You know, my family. I did it only to get my son on, mm -hmm. and it really fucked his life up to me. You know, and they did it intentionally. So fuck them. Oh, okay. so I yeah. got a lawsuit. There's money on your head, and I'm embarrass you. Remember that. I'm gonna call your name out, and all your kids' friends are gonna know I'm coming at you for the right reason. Yeah. I see that's the thing that makes me the unicorn. You name another cat beside me that before the revolution or even after that actually calls out white people's name. Name one. I'll wait. We've been fighting for the I mean I said name somebody else that does that. I mean whatever, So when you call out when you call out New York Cones of the world, um, is that out of built up frustration? I didn't build up. I've been calling them out. I have to build up. I've been calling them out since the damn minute. I've been screaming on New York publicly for days. See, you never, you never respected them. Talk the real. No. Talk the real. Never. Talk the real. All right. Your man respected them. I never knew why. Jay Z. I mean, you know. Um. <laughs> So I, I got a question though. We, we we was fans of like just that whole culture, just music. That's how we grew up on music. So like you know that 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 president's video with you, Big J, AZ, like. Want to hear a funny story about that video? I do. I told it to Dennis today actually. Um. So, uh, you know after a lot of bullshit, we finally we got, we got cool with Biggie, and he came to the video. It was our first time hanging out, and. Uh, you know, I got into a drinking contest with him. <laughs> and, you know, he was, you know, very, a lot heavier than me. And I ended up playing myself. 
and getting too drunk and not remembering. And I woke up the next day and like, you know, it was actually the only time I ever seen Jay really mad at me. He was like, yo, you was no good. I was like, what you talking about? So I called Biggs, he was like, man, he was drunk. He was holding this nigga chain, jumping his car. <laughs> I was like, what? In Biggs' car? No, in Biggie's car. I was like, Biggie's car. Yeah, yeah, Biggie's car. Yeah, 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 I guess he wasn't driving, but whatever. I don't remember. So, <laughs> you know, I'll... <laughs> Every crew got one. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that night, me and Biggs went down to Daddy's house and was, you know, like, look, I was drunk, don't take that. And then we hired them to perform. Cause we, the thing was, we were going to have Biggie um, headline so that Jay could open for him. So that was the business we handled that day. But then every day after that, that I saw Biggie was on, and we would have drinking contests. So you know the um, you know he like stink mink gators. Yeah, my Yeah, that was because we was at the Bobby Brown birthday, and he was supposed to perform with Puff, but me and him got into a drinking contest. But this time I was like, I'm gonna go throw up behind the curtain, so I won't get too stupid. So I went through up, made myself throw up. Samantha Rich and they was an analytics and shit all the time. <laughs> but this thing ended up throwing up on his mink. Mm-hmm. So that's why they was calling it the stink mink after that. They called it the stink mink gators that came from that story. But it's funny because I really, you know, Biggie was really my man. So yeah, like I was like, did you really yeah, crazy. did you understand that moment? Because y'all was young, I don't know how we yeah. like, I knew did that you, moment. Yeah, that's that's why why you yeah, yeah, you understand. Yeah. I mean, nigga, you could have never told me I'm not Dan Dash. And I wasn't gonna be Dan Dash. I knew everything I was doing was historic. You couldn't have told me. And even now. It's not a second I come outside that I don't think I'm making history. Nigga, we making history right now. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I know I'm a history maker. So that's why I document everything, because I look cool every day. Yeah, I think that's important. It, Looking it's cool it's every day is important. You got to keep your fresh up at all times. Just, you know, the right shit. Right. You got to be, be a rock star all the time. Keep your shoes clean, keep your nails clean. It's funny. Be a rock star. Like, just be right. We, we watched you in those times, and it was like, yo, you seem like the happiest guy on earth. I was the happiest, and I still am. And that's what I'm saying. Now it's like people look at you, and it's like, oh, James, he's as attitude proud when he's all to work with, and it's like, nah, you're actually the happiest. What do you expect a slave to say? <laughs> do you expect a soldier to know what a general's happiness is? You know, a soldier doesn't know what a win feels like unless the general is winning. A slave doesn't ever know what the win is. They think the win is a good meal. <laughs> you know? So I have no expectation of a slave understanding my happiness and I don't give a fuck. Keep thinking of, really thinking about how I feel is the wrong thing. Think about how you feel. If you're taking pills for depression, don't think about me. Word of advice. Um did from a from a musical standpoint, something I always wondered about, because it was always rumors. Um did making did you ever make Cameron the VP of Rockefeller and did that lead to like some like, real issues? You want on this tip, huh? <laughs> uh, Of course, I made Cameron a VP. I also made Beanie Siegel a VP. Anyone that had a label with me was considered a VP, and that was actually the moment I realized I'm getting the fuck away from these guys. They're not the right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, forget it. You know what I'm saying? That's all it was, really. <laughs> I'm sure I heard the conversation we had. It's like, not like Jay was on the yacht, that was the first vacation we went on, he like made this call, and it was like, are you fucking kidding me? And then Beanie was mad, and I'm like, but you're a VP too. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Forget it. I don't even care. I was just trying to help everybody. Everyone that gets a label, you become a VP. I'm just trying to empower you. Niggas was on the phone like, so I gotta go to them to get my lip, my my fucking videos approved. I was like, did you ever have to go to anybody to get your videos? Like, bye. It became a bye situation. I couldn't talk about it too much. I mean, you say probably came out of that, and then you got out of what? Out of that that time frame when oh, say yeah. probably came. came out of that's what I'm saying. And, and he was a, he was a, I made him a VP. And you got two films out of it. Yeah, yeah. A directed one. Yeah. Well, education. I'm interested to know you. You said you got a network. I heard about this from previous, like the gentleman that you mentioned. He told me that you you speak to principals. Ninety. So yeah, what's, can we talk about that? Always oh, network. network. I, I want to know more about. Listen, that. instead of complaining about curriculum and the way education is approaching us as a culture, Dennis McKeezy has curated like these like principles that with principles that really give a fuck and do things out of love, and you know. Uh, Lays from MOP, and he's like a dang dash from MOP, just called me and was like, yo, I want you to jump on this Zoom with me. I ain't, I wouldn't even pay him no mind. I'm like, whatever, that's my man, so I'm gonna do it. I trust him. Mm-hmm. 
I jumped on the Zoom and I'm really like looking at shit. I'm like, 90 black principals? I didn't even know there was black principals. And they mad cool, smart. They want to do shit. So instead of complaining about education, the fact that they make us prepare to be slaves, you go in any school, it smells, it's lit, and the walls look like a jail. Yep. You sit in a room while the sun is out and sit behind the desk for eight hours and leave your parents, which is similar to what a job is, and you only see your parents when you and your parents are tired. Yeah. Uh -uh. And that just seems like programming to me. And these principals were trying to relate to these kids and giving me factual shit about how to help them. And they're all geniuses and brilliant and creative and fly. And they're the ultimate think tank for me. And they all deserve to be famous. And they all deserve to have all their dreams come true because they've made so many others' dreams come true. So are you, you working with like curriculum? To to like curriculum, everything, yes. Making education for us. Yeah, I mean. By us. For us, by us. Not yeah. by me. Yeah. Uh, by intuition, real principles that have been sitting with children all over the world. And this shit ain't even just like 90 in the country, it's all over the world. Well, I think the, the, the struggle, and I've worked with principals obviously pretty closely. Um, the struggle is like we can have, they can have their ideas, but a lot of times they have those ideas to stay in that school. They're not even it's that. They're not, they're, it's still a job. They have to protect their job. And so, like, that's how. That's all, the other part of it. It's like, look, we can have these ideas for how we want to teach our kids. We can create the curriculum, but they still have to meet state mandates, and that's where the roadblock comes in. It's like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not a soldier. I don't depend on government to teach me either, because so, they're only going to teach me what behooves them, and that's all I've seen them do. Make people think that unless they go to college and get a nine to five and get debt, they're doing the wrong thing, and that they should only be fucking happy when they're sixty five and old. So that and I'm not doing that. So that so that puts the, the principal in that position, right? Like they still have to answer to somebody. So I'm thinking to myself, is it is the role now to create an independent school where you're not that's what we're doing. Okay, that's that's what I was going with. So like that's the goal of that's, oh. been, that's one of the goals. Okay. But it's also an independent act. It's also an independent place to just give people information. It's also a place to give people a place to communicate and talk about problems so we can get action. Right. Bringing attention and awareness to problems without a solution is nothing but frustrating and depressing people. Don't tell me the problem if you ain't got a solution. Unless you want to go fight, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I agree. And I feel like education, I think too many times people feel education only happens in school. But it's like education can happen on the internet. Ridiculous. Yeah. That's ridiculous. The only thing that happens in school is debt. Yeah. Basically, but look how insane white people are about what it looks like to have a fake education to the extent that they were buying and motherfuckers are doing jail time because of perception mm -hmm. of having an education. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> it's not even a fucking yeah. a systematic racism of human. It's not. Like, to me, racism is just to separate both people. For both people to fight each other so that they don't fight the rich people. That's it. What, what's a white racist? He's usually fucking cracked. Living with dip spit <laughs> in a fucking hut. Like, I lived in North Carolina. I'd be online and nigga that out there, Confederate shit, flag, and go back to the car. I'd be laughing. I'm getting in the Porsche. Of course you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> how many, how many rich races is on the front line of of KKK? But there are a lot of rich races, though. I didn't, nigga, they they racist just because they want to stay rich. Okay, how is it racism in Kanye? Gap is the most all-American institution, and they put a black man name in front of it. Well, it's for itself. They won't, you know, you it's, so it's not racism. When it comes to money, white people are going to put a black man name in front of theirs. What are you talking about? But is that, Look at the Germans and fucking... But is that business? Because you, you can still be racist and do business with somebody and make yeah, money. Who cares a fuck? Who cares? Who can't be racist if I can fire you? I don't care. 
Go in the bathroom and scream, nigga, all you want. You fight. I'm your boss. You should be racist. You should be mad you got a boss. You want to blame it on me? Go ahead. But you can't do shit to me for it. A racist can't stop me from getting money. No, absolutely. All I, do, all I do with a racist is hire him and work him to make him my slave. The legend has spoken. We was a slave for my fucking culture. Get your ass out there and get my people some money. We all, you a slave, Tara. You, might, you are slave now. We gotta make the narrative right. They get money off us. How come we not the masters if they making money off us? Cause they tell us they are boss, nigga. Like I'm your boss. You making money off me? You my slave. I'ma hire you. You know what I did on on growing up hip hop to um. What's her name? Nicolette, uh, who was our line producer for OG Stories. Oh, shit. What's her name? What the fuck's her name? <laughs> the showrunner? I told her, yo, stop telling me what to do. I'm going to be your boss. And then I got, I did the OG Stories and I hired her to fucking be the fucking showrunner for my show. I'm your boss now. Don't pretend you're a boss. I'm going to pay you. It ain't racism. It's suckerism. Don't try to make me think because you think I'm black that you better than me just because you say so. Show me that. Nigga, you rob me, you got to show me your gut, period. And if I show you mine, I'm using it. So how do these, like, people like the Leo of the world, Todd Bosch, where it's like... Bench Leo. You, you, you. Now he got to run behind YouTube's people. He's out the music business. Did they just rise but, to power just by... There ain't no power. I mean... They don't have power. What power? When he was the head of Dexter. That wasn't no power. He was my little man. He used to work for me at Rockefeller. I was go get my budgets clear and shut up. That nigga know no power. He ain't on shit at Rockefeller. What power? So you giving him power? I didn't give him power. I was saying. Why are you saying he had power? I said, well, well. By title. I was saying title. Title. Who's who's title? title. To who? No, I'm just saying by title. I ain't giving nigga no title. His title is my little man. Look, what I, what I was that going, was his title. What I was going with this is that people in that position, right? As far as I'm they fronting, they not in that position. But well, what I'm saying is that has supervisors, they not bosses, it ain't there. So it has to be a certain level of perception that is giving them certain authority. No, it's a certain level of you believing perception that's giving them a certain. Well, we didn't know. We, 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 we. I told you he was a little. He's my little. You man. said you said that, but there's a bunch of other rappers that have praised him. I told. Those rappers that that's your little man, ask Norman. I said, Leo's a sucker. Ask Norman, he'll tell you. I told every artist Leo's a sucker. Yeah. Okay. Fair exchange. Collaboration. You're not, you're not opposed to collaboration. I do it all the time. I think it's a key. Something that we don't do enough of. Collaboration. I do. We just collaborated right now. I'm just saying not us. I'm just saying in general. In general. Well, yeah, in general. But now you're in the presence of a general. So that's the reason why that's not even in my fucking vernacular. I don't have people around me that don't do that. And all I do is say, look, I'm going to televise my revolution because I don't want to snub I'm being here doing it. But you're still going to see me. I'm in your pocket, in your phone. Yeah. <laughs> can we can we can we uh maybe shift gears a little bit and, and because it's something also that I, um you can do whatever you want. Bro. We we announce the question. Just ask. Not now we admire from a distance, man. That that's like I said. That you add balance in your life, obviously. Have what balance? Yeah. Um, fatherhood is, is balance. You, I know you're in a, in a relationship. How, how humble to me. How, how is like that was my thing. How how has that been over the, the past few years? And now that you have teenagers that are growing, um, you have a son. Obviously, I'm loving being. Emotional. I'm loving being a dad. And going through everything I heard about. I love it. What do you mean you heard about? You know, you hear about your kids back in a certain way oh, okay. at a certain time and that. And knowing how to deal with it. I'm loving being a dad. And everything that comes with it. Everything. Even the tears. Yeah. Loving people more than yourself feels so good. And that's what you got to understand. If you have one car and it's a coupe. You're a selfish motherfucker. If you have an apartment and you have children and you have a one bedroom and you're happy, 
you, you're not getting it. You gotta get your life together. I'm happy when my kids have houses. My daughter Ava showed me her crib the other day. I'm so fucking proud of me and her. My other daughter, right? This is how I knew I was doing my job. Because I do get at my daughters because they go to school and they also get brainwashed. So my daughter Tallulah loves school and all she knows in life is she wants to go to college. I said, what's your dream job? I don't know. What's your dream? I don't know. You want to go to college? Yeah. How do you know that? Because you were told that. I bet you want a nine to five too, don't you? What's a nine to five? I did my job. <laughs> I, that made everything. So I don't care about nothing. But so, your, daughter, your daughter still went to college though, right? Like this Ava. This Ava. is not nah, absolutely. Yeah, Ava went to college to make a mother's dreams come true. She's a model and she also works for me, but yeah. she's working for herself. So would you do not encourage your kids to go to college? I encourage them to do whatever makes them happy, not me or their mother or their parents. Okay. Fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Family business. Uh, is that something that you, you have aspirations for your children to what do you mean? Rachel Roy? Ain't that studio? No, I'm saying as far as you're talking about your children, right? Like, they're gonna they can run this business if they want. This is theirs. This is their business. I'm not working for me, I work for them. If you work for you, you're working for the wrong cause. And if you don't work for your wife, your girl, significant other, you ain't doing it right. What's, your, what, what's on your vision board for the next 20 years? Like, what's, what's the next? Obviously, we in the Grand Dad Studios right now, but I seem like you're always thinking ahead of time. So, what's your, what's your on your vision board for the next? Next time? is sports. Sports management. I'm sick of complaining about leagues and getting into these racist leagues. I'm starting my own leagues. Fuck being a team. Yeah, I, I saw you did. There's a deal you have with the. Is it the NBA XL? Mm -hmm. Is that are you part ownership of that or are you just broadcasting it? We're working on. You know, the business of it is not all solidified. Okay, but it's going to be on the network. Huh? Yeah. Okay, and those those games are starting. Okay. I I, 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 I put you with interview with him so he can tell you, but. My agenda is to do that in every sport. I have a network, I promote it, and my league's gonna be way funner than anybody's league and way fly. I think it's a, it's a, it can happen, people doubt it, I do, but that, that league. It can happen. Yeah, it's happening. I'm saying it, Beyonce really. It's happening. There you have it. It's happening. <laughs> Ain't no way. It might happen. It can happen. It's happening. So what's happening is it's happening. Is the logistics of is it five on five or is it are we yeah. okay it's five on five so from what my understanding of it and maybe you can help me out with that is that it's really for almost like a developmental league for people who haven't made it. Nah, 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 nah. It's a pro league. It's a pro league. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, we're not doing we not doing some pro. We're doing pro pro ball. No, it sounds like the G league is a developmental. Who told you that? No, I didn't know. I said, I'm gonna be a G league. I'm gonna own a G League. I'm an A League. Facts. Say that. Yeah, we can. You think I aspire? My dream is to have a G League. Facts. Mm -mm. you know, Nicolette, give me some orange juice. I'm sorry. I love you, Nicolette. <laughs> I love Nicolette. See, that's why her dreams have to come true because she makes orange juice. Cause I get orange juice for you. Say that on. No. No, you said the camera. No. Say it on the camera. No. Say it. I let her yell at me on cancer. Because <laughs> I love her. Because she gives love all day long. So we got basketball and then what, what everything, we everything. Everything. All sports after that? Everything. But also, I want to make a sport profitable out of like something like educational, like debating. Mm. You know, like my, my problem with education is they also enable us. So, like, for a certain class, you think the only way to get out of it is entertainment or athletics. And you devote your whole life to playing basketball, and that's like a lot of it. And you get hurt the majority of your time before you get there, and they don't have a plan. And the reason why people devote their whole life to it and go to basketball in school is because they think they can make money enough. Yeah. So let's make something educational profitable and make a team out of that. Don't you think they're smart enough to know that educationally, that if we make them think they could be they like facilitate their enablers. School is enabling. We look off that line. Like that was when y'all put that line out, 
And that was the first lesson I ever taught. When it came, it was like hip hop literacy. It was like all the guys back, all black guys sports entertainment. Like that preference stuff to go into development of how many other people are famous and not even famous, but have created have created wealth from outside of the sports and entertainment industry. So that's kind of how we were well, you got you got a much better chance of you know making being an entrepreneur than being the top rapper. That's for sure. You guys are funny, man. You, you um, I'm not laughing. I'm not. I'm not lying. He's funny. <laughs> oh, guys, you. Big homie? You. <laughs> I'm big homie. Yeah, you're big homie. You guys should do a fucking scripted TV show. I'm scripted. Nah, we gave you. The thing I is, have, is I got I got that. That. we knew each other for 30 Perfect. years. So I we, did, I did. Yo, <laughs> I got a script. Nicolette, what? can you ask um, Valor if he's finished with that uh, script? <laughs> Uh, Let's do it. Then I, I have a script. No, y'all doing it. Y'all have it's to like do it. Entourage on steroids. <laughs> you guys, no, no, it's saying like Entourage. It's a scripted movie. And I think you guys should be a movie. I'm, about to, I'm about to call myself a young day. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't take it too far. You feel I said you're funny. You're like me. I'm fly too. I'm fly. Nah, that's I got that. This is not even going too far. And you got on white pants. See? Yeah, man. Let's go. Dame Dash Studios scripted TV show. Sounds good. It's good. It's funny how you said Sounds great. It's funny, funny. <laughs> no, you guys. We've been discussing all shit now, too. Sounds like. Oh, she's been live. Everybody's watching. Everybody's watching. Oh, it's on IG right now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, shout out to IG. We'll shout out to IG. I warned y'all. I did. Yeah, we told you. You know what it is. And they tagged everybody. Dame. Oh, you're better. Appreciate you. That's it. Any more questions, Troy? No, nah, I just wanted to, you know, pay homage, man. Like, I honestly, I honestly, we have grown up watching you, and these guys know, man. Like, Rockefeller was, that's I right. felt like I was part of that shit, man. The way, the way that it was part of it. That's yeah, right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, we watch and study y'all moves. Um, Even the way we, we get some bullshit at the end. Yeah, but, we, but, that, but that's fine, though, because yeah. you did that so we don't have to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, that, that's, and, that, and that's, yeah, one, right. that's, that's one of the things. It that might have been the about. sacrificial lamb so you want to learn from. Yeah, yeah, we no. did, we definitely took that. I wear that because we didn't lose. I didn't lose too much money. Yeah, but now we want to we want to we want to give you your flowers because, like I said, I mean, you definitely was a major inspiration for us on the business side. You want to give me some flour? Where is that? Mike, where the flowers are? Mike, where's no, the flowers? I'm gonna go to the dispensary right now. I'm gonna go to the dispensary. I'm gonna buy a little dispensary week. For real? I'll give you a number to call. What's the number? <laughs> you can whatever you, can whatever you want. <laughs> I get ten minutes. Damn, I just ordered some shit. But you're most days we're smoking new weed right now. It's that new weed. That's that new new? It's that new OG. Any last words for up and coming entrepreneurs, people that, you know, know no, guys? No, there's never last words for an entrepreneur. If you bit with the entrepreneur bug, you're always going to want more. But self care is important. important. Make sure you get some sleep. And make sure you celebrate yourself. And make sure you're enjoying yourself. You know, I'm a firm believer in I would never do anything and get paid for it unless I would do it for free. So you didn't pay me for this, mm-hmm. but I could get paid for this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and gentlemen. Troy, housekeeping item? Yeah, shout out to everybody on Patreon.com. That's our private pay program. We appreciate your support. Y'all know what's here for Go five. get call of action if you want to support. Oh, yeah. Everyone in this room right now, please order Dame Dash Studios from your phone. Mm-hmm. And everyone that hears yeah. this, if you're actually believing what I'm saying about the support thing, just fucking support. Plain and simple. Just what's, what's, the order. Link? what's the link? Dame Dash Studio. They know Studios.com? Dot com. You can get it. You have an iPhone, I hope so. <laughs> I'm big so I don't, I don't. We don't do it. I don't date chicks with, with, if they don't got an iPhone. Okay, but. The answer is yes. <laughs> yes. I'm looking at it right now. I'm going to get it. So you can go get it on iTunes or whatever I store. <laughs> James Dash Studios. I got it. Uh, iTunes is going now, right? However, it is. That's the thing. Yeah. Oh, so. Anywhere that you can get Netflix, you can get my shit. Go get that. And uh, like, you, like we said, tier 4 and 5, y'all know they got access to EY, the university, the number one online business this, school in the world. This show is also going to be on my shit. Independence yeah. is art. Yeah, there, you go. there you go. There you go. I got you. Man. OG. And shout out to everybody that's been supporting merch on EYL, uh, everyleader.com. Uh, we got a bunch of merch for you. Access over liability. That is, that is our that's slogan. That's our slogan that we're running with. 
It's a lot of copycats that took our, they took our, yeah, our we got they never take it. But we got trademarks What's on the it. logo? The logo on the back. back. We got a couple different logos, but that's the logo that we go with. It's funny, that, that is very similar to the OSG network. 
translation of the, the real name of Jesus is Yahshua. Mm -hmm. And the Jesus is a European translation and nothing that took place in the Bible happened in Europe. So why do we all worship a name that's a European translation? Or just logically. Mm -hmm. And he was the first person, the bishop, to break that down to me in such an eloquent way with such aggression. He's a damn dash of history of religion. And then also I talked to Billy Carson, who I haven't spoke to since he lost his hat. I'm, 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 I was like, yo, bro, call me, man. And he uh, is telling me the original origin of history, you know, the Anunnaki shit, where yeah. we're really from, how human was even made, just based on text that they don't tell us. Just based on religion, we come from being modified from people from another planet. I heard that you talking about the hieroglyphics. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that's what's on the network. That's the Galaxy Network, the Yacht Squad Network, the OG, the OSG Network. These are people that are better at me, better than me, but they know intelligently about the things that I personally believe need to be fixed. Like, I've had an knock since I was a teenager. I've always had a honk on me. That cross never made sense to me. Mm -hmm. Because it only represented phallic men. You know, and it sticks on me. This represents a woman and me. God is a combination of both on this planet. But the man's job is to be a slave. I do firmly believe that women are God, logically, because they make life, and isn't that what God does? Thank you, Andrew. That's what God is, right? So, who, what on this planet creates life? So how could they not be God? Just logically. Put your ego to the side. How can a woman not be God if she creates life and we can't? Logically. Well, I think that a man plays a part in creating life. Like when no man is no, nah, no, 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 nah, nah, nah. Actually, there's no like. No, no, no. Let me just say this. Before there was men, women actually could create life without men. Like immaculate conception? Yeah, not immaculate conception. It was. I, I gotta do. I gotta. I, I, I'll show you the shit. But again, we don't. Like my my girl, my wife, my telephone dash is pregnant right now with my baby. I had a part in it. That baby's in her. Congratulations. Right. Right. And, but it's in her. It's growing in her. Her body is the one that's going through a physical change. She's the one whose hormones are on a different level. Right. She's the one who has to have a six to eight pound for, you know, come to a whole this bitch. We ain't doing it. She's the one that has to have a period every month and be in pain just so she can create life. Is that not the case? That's true, that's true. You know, she's the one that doesn't have physical muscle because of lack of testosterone, which is generated by our testicles, to go physically do work. So if we're here to make muscle to go physically do physical work, I just believe our role in this world is to be a slave for a woman. And that's the only way you can be a king is if you're a slave for a queen. That's just how I feel. When did you get to that point? Because I know you uh, were doing the investing women thing, man. I thought that was extremely powerful. But at what point did you get to that declaration or that thought process when it came to women? It was an evolution of thought, but it started with really. Yeah. You know, she really was, you know, it was like royalty. Her presence was royal. And then the feeling that I got from Raquel was similar to the feeling that I felt from Malia. And it was just a royalness about it. It was just a very, I just feel the need to serve. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know why. Powerful. Yeah. 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 Powerful. Absolutely. Dane, once again, we appreciate you, good brother. Um, I, 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 I'm like in awe of this, really. 
That's just crazy. Yeah, 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 it's crazy. Like, I think we had that conversation. Like, I texted him, like, yo, remember when we said we were going to get dinged? Well, let yeah. me ask you this question. Right, yeah. Because I know that there are people that I wanted to meet, and when I meet them, it's not what I thought it would be. So, what did you think this experience would be like from beginning to end, just the experience in general? Honestly, I thought it would be just like this. Yeah, pretty much. I really thought it was going to be just like this, and it did not, it did not disappoint. Pretty like, much is how I how I envisioned it. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. We, I, I text him today. I'm like, yo, February 29th, 2019, um, your page followed us. And I was like, yo, bro, yo, they ain't following us. Like, we really. What's your page? <laughs> On your leisure. On Instagram. That's y'all? <laughs> wow. That's crazy. You know, it's funny because I, I, I follow random shit and things on it that's interesting. Yeah, I was, and I was like, I still got this. I, I texted him today, like, yo, bro, that was February. And I'm like, yo, damn, like, I think we own we something. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know that was y'all. Yeah. Yep. I was just, that was a random thing. Yeah. I think you might have came up on my Popular feet. page. You came up on my feet because of Billy Carson, I think. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, he meant everything us. Yeah, it's big deal fun. Yeah. Straight up, though. and he texted me like, yo, we gotta get Dean, and we gotta get Master P, and I think both those things can happen in the spring, and we were like, let's do it. And then we had Nipsey on the list, and then two weeks after that. Yeah, my interaction with Nipsey was so interesting. Nipsey, man, how was it? Because as far as it, the reason why we really wanted to, because we're a business podcast, and he just really, he's well, one of the guys that's just he so, was, so um, business-wise. Well, he had such a level of respect. You know, for real shit. And I had never met him, and he actually came to a book signing of mine in a club. Mm-hmm. And when I heard, he, I was on my way out, I heard he was there, I came back. I didn't leave, I just went back to, and we spoke. And every second was the knowledge, like he was picking my brain. And then you know, we exchanged numbers and we spoke about some other personal things. You know, I still got this Texas that we spoke about. It was just a sponge. And I could like see him applying things daily. And that really did like, and, and my, the dude that I consider my therapist, but he's a friend that gives me therapy when we talk, or he has therapeutic conversation with me. Taj, like a little bit friend of his, and it was like, it was like losing big, yeah. it was like losing the leader, like knowing someone personally and their potential, mm-hmm. and he was like realizing his potential, I was like looking at what he was going to look like in 10 years already, right. I was like, he's going to be ill in 10 years, in 15, he's going to be sick, he's still going to be young, yeah. so it's like, when you're doing things that are important, you got to tighten up. Mm-hmm. And the only light I could get out of that was to learn from it. And that experience made me tighten up. But it was sad and it hurt. And it still does. Because yeah. I always like, when I see potential, I always wonder like, what the fuck would Aaliyah be today? What would Biggie be today? Big out. Big L. You know? Tupac. Tupac. Big pun. Big pun. Who does these people? I mean, who would they be today? Like, look who I am today. Well, who would they be? They didn't make it. We're still crispy, though. But, you know, it's not like this is old. Senseless acts of violence. But it's just how many Senseless. of our generals, our generals yeah. get caught up in a stupid war. Nazis. They're like fighting the good war right to where you slip for the stupid war. So if you're good in one place, make sure you're good every place. When you're good in one place, tighten up every place. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, got, I got a question. If there's any, I forgot to ask you. But obviously you've been around a lot of people. Who influences you now? Is it just family or there other people? out there that you watch and like, you know, that's a, a source of influence. So is there anybody out there? Kanye influences me. 
I didn't talk to you. When your student becomes your teacher, you, you did your job. That should, be the, that should be the goal of every teacher. For the, well said. Not to, it's happened. You know, through all the bullshit, when I have conversations with him, I learn. You know, because to me, he's better than me and making the dreams come true. You don't have the same dream, mm -hmm. but he makes his dreams come true better than me in a manic state sometimes. Genius. Definitely. Definitely. It, it's art. Kanye is art. Yes. Yeah. For me. <laughs> Living, breathing art. Everything he does is, is fucking interesting and different. You gotta watch. Yeah. Everything he does. You gotta watch. Yeah. And I'm really proud of him. You know? He took that fucking red hat off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fucking. And now he's running for president. He never said that. Tweet. He did not tweet that. Well, no. He said 2020 vision. Yeah, I'll take it the way you want it. I ain't seen him run for shit. All I heard was, I'm taking the red hat off. Shut up, Kanye. My brother. We gotta get an interview with Kanye. That's the next, that's the next giant. Dane, uh, once again, we appreciate your hospitality. Your general. Also, he dropped that two video. He dropped what? That two video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the counter. George Floyd's daughter. Yeah. All right, let me give you another Jeopardy music question. Name another motherfucker that's talking about helping that dropped anywhere near too many. One of George Floyd's <laughs> That's a heavy, that's a heavy mic drop. Yeah. That made me proud. He came through. And he was in the streets too. He was in the streets. Dropped that bank. Right? Flew his private jet, walked through the shit, didn't say a word, jumped back on his jet, and was the loudest voice with that motherfucking. A mic drop is a fucking bag drop. Bag drop. That's gangsta. Too million. Too million. I got the answers. Yeah, that's, that's significant. That's all we need to talk about. Took the red hat off. And did the bag drop when it count. Oh yeah. One of the greatest I'm proud to be a part of that. One of the on any level. One of the greatest ever. Nah, time. right now he's the best that ever did because of the gap deal and the sneaker deal. The nigga made he Jordan with yeah. sneakers. He did. Yeah, not that man. Not that you know, gotta give that man his props. Yeah, not after the building. And also the gap. Gap is gonna be crazy. That's gonna and be crazy. he's localizing production. Yeah, uh, did, so I heard, wait, wait, you know what that means? I heard they were trying to give him some a fight, some fight back in Wyoming. I don't there. care. I'm just saying he's making sure everything made is by US. him yeah. is in the US. Yeah, that's important. My bag drop. That's all that counts. All the other shit is fucking circus. He bag dropped it. According to him. My graduate from my school being forced. Kevin Hart? All. <laughs> Big one. Big one. Poppington University. Bad drop. Bad drop. Bad drop. <laughs> 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 Bad, drop. <laughs> Bad drop. Bad drop. That's my dude. That's my drop. Can we make that a drop? Can, right we, can we make that a drop? Bad <laughs> drop. You know, we start. We need. We need drops. We ask. Speaking that's of a drops, drop. That's we need to earn a leisure drop. Bad drop. So Bad then drop. do one. EYL University. Do one. You are universal, what do you think you say? This thing is funny. <laughs> Bad drop. Bad drop. They talking about college. Bad drop. You know you're still back in the fucking camp. <laughs> I'm always, I'm ghost. I'm, they call me ghost. You're not sounding like a ghost. <laughs> if it wasn't on live, nobody would have been. You look like a ghost pause in your legs. <laughs> my white pants? <laughs> Yo, you have yo, to wear, you have to wear I ran out of clothes. You have to wear I don't got that many clothes. Yo, don't, don't light up. Don't black smoke, man. You might get some ashes on that. White pants are black belt. White black belt. You're black belt. No, but you're not supposed to see that. You got to give me credit. No, you're not supposed to see that. No, no, we see it. Because I'm chilling. I, I feel comfortable. I'm, I'm with Dave. I'm with a legend. I'm chilling. What is going? You should never feel that comfortable. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. 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 That's exactly what you should have done. Uh, okay. it's a now, you know, everybody wearing white pants, but I just. No, 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 no. Like, there was there. Start uh, reading this. Yeah, they puff on the party later? Yeah. Oh, dear. I ain't wearing nothing shiny. I ain't wearing nothing shiny. Yeah. Is there like a boat ride you were about to go on? You remember those back in the day? You remember those back in the day? You remember those? No, you don't. No, you don't. You know what's crazy? And I said this as his special a few years ago. This is this is off topic, but it's true. Black people are the only culture I've ever seen go to an all white party. We're like obsessed with the color white. I've never seen a Spanish all white party. They be going crazy. Black people love white parties. But you love white. No, I do love white, the color, but I'm it's just saying, dumb. I don't know why. Why? I, like, they do all white baby white showers, dumb. all white boat parties, all white. Think about it. It's always an all white party for black people somewhere. That's a narrative. Yeah. That's, that's, that's. But that's, that's our that's culture. Program. Sometimes we got to accept our culture. That's what, that's what we do. That's, 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 that's the culture. That's the culture. That's the culture. To think that dark is, 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 means really dark. And light means, you know, rather like, or rather something, whatever. But anyway, Dane, once again, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for letting me be on your TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Television <laughs> show. Production. Vivo. show. Earn your leisure. Dane, you teach the production skills? Because I'm not leaving. Huh? No, 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 you can't teach them. You can't, you can't teach them. Good, bro. Good. It's good. I just fucking. Take a picture. Yeah. Let's go. I'm doing it. You got to come back and like this shit. Damn. Damn. Oh, you just took the power out? I'm going to end it. That's not good. That's not good.